In World War II, Canadians killed Germans. The end. One point one million Canadians served in World War II, including one hundred eight thousand total casualties. Weapons in the Second World War included rifles, carbines, revolvers, pistols, light and heavy machine guns, and many forms of grenades. Trench warfare was abandoned in the Second World War. Battalion commanders would receive orders from their brigade commanders and begin formulating plans to complete these objectives. A constant mission took place to get the information from people. Battalion commanders would have to take into account where their allies and enemies were and what resources they had at their disposal. A subunit would begin firing at the enemy, causing the enemy to take cover. While they were firing, the other subunits would move forward. Subunits would take turns firing at the enemy, so the other subunits would move forward. A battalion is a small group of soldiers consisting of various subunits. These subunits would often group with other regiments like armored vehicles or other battalions to form bigger armies. When Britain needed new equipment, they turned to Canada to make more armored tanks. The tank they made was the Valentine Mark VI, which was similar to the Mark IV. It was the first mass-produced Canadian tank. 1,420 Valentines were made in all, and all sent to York, with the exception of 30 which were held back for training. At the start of the war, there was 1,500 sailors in the Royal Canadian Navy. By the end of the war, there was 92,000 sailors in the Royal Canadian Navy. Canada had... Canada owned six destroyers, 64 corvettes, 54 Bangor minesweepers, six Fair Miles, two MTB, and had more built throughout the war. The Merchant Navy of Canada was known for their bravery. They would often sail defenseless, sometimes slow ships, and fallen by enemy subs. Halifax was a favorite departure point for North American convoys. Convoys were favored because it was easier to travel together and it would be harder to be found by enemy ships. The Royal Canadian Navy's women's service wasn't around until 1942. Their duties included office work, household chores, and food preparation, and they danced and sang in the Meet the Navy show. But the Navy soon saw that the women could do duties such as communication and intelligence communications. Even still, the women were not permitted to serve on the naval vessels. 7,122 women served in the Royal Canadian Navy. This was the start for the Army and the Air Force to open up women's services. The British Commonwealth Air Training Plan was a plan made by Britain for Canada to become the training grounds for pilots. This was a big contribution to World War II. Fighter squadrons were used as a defensive weapon overseas. They were in case Britain was attacked. The Canadian government did all that was necessary to keep the RCAF truly Canadian and other Canadian orders. The British respected this decision. There were usually 12 aircrafts in each squad, breaking off into groups of three or four they were attacked. The squads had to move in sync with each other. They had to move and act as one with the commands of their squadron leader. Sneaking up on the enemy was the ideal way to attack, to avoid enemy fire, and to stay hidden. The Flying Vic formation was essentially a Flying V formation, although this was a weak one. For when you were flying in your Vic formation, an enemy craft could sneak up and begin firing on your squad. By the time you realized what was happening, it was probably too late. Eventually, they started putting an extra wingman at the back, but this was a dangerous place to be because you would usually be the first victim. Formations broke down even more to just the pilot and his wingman. If two of these squads went together, they became what they called the Finger Four. This was the favorite formation of the Canadian pilots. <laughs> 